All right, so we're back, of course, talking about some Final Fantasy VII Remake, and you already know what we're here to do. Translations, Material Ultimania, Itai Komochi. So today I want to look at two different translations that somewhat go together, and the first one we're going to look at is we apparently got to see possibly the live stream when it came to Remake. So the scene we're talking about is right after you defeat the Whisper Harbinger and right before you fight Sephiroth at the end of the game, there's an actual cinematic cutscene, not just like an in-engine cutscene. It's like the high-quality cutscenes. And we get to see this like kind of realm that the group is in that is apparently the live stream and that switches over to Sephiroth showing Meteor and everything destroying all the shit. So let's just read over this translation really quickly. This scene is extremely important because it hints at the showdown between the world of the live stream that Aerith represents versus the world of Meteor that Sephiroth represents. It is very fitting that Sephiroth, the strongest villain, appears in the world full of destruction caused by Meteor, so please pay close attention to that. So this right here is the cutscene I'm talking about where Cloud asks where they are and Aerith nods her head because she doesn't know. The reason why I say possibly the live stream is just because he referred to it as live stream world and when we see Sephiroth come in he refers to that as Meteor world. I don't know what that means exactly. Like, I obviously understand the juxtaposition between the two, good and evil. I understand that. Aerith is good. Sephiroth is evil. But if they're in the live stream, well, why not just say they're in the live stream? That's why I'm not sure if that's actually what it is. But if that is what it is, this might be the first time that we've ever had, like, a physical manifestation of the live stream. Like, I've always thought of it, like, being a spiritual, not a tangible place, but somewhere that they're actually at walking around. It's kind of cool. We've had other stuff in the past that could potentially be the live stream. Like, you have Cloud talking to Zack. During Advent Children, he's in like this place full of light that you could maybe interpret that as a live stream, especially since Zack is dead. Then you also have Genesis meeting the goddess Minerva in Crisis Core. She gives off energy in the game, something like a summon. That's what they think she might be, but she might be something from the live stream itself. And so maybe that's where they're at right here is the live stream. I don't know. And actually looking into it really quickly, this scene actually takes place right after you defeat Genesis within the Crisis Core story. It's been a long time since I played Crisis Core, so I think it actually is confirmed to be the live stream. The point of all that is, I don't recall very many times, if any at all, that we've tangibly seen the live stream, so maybe that's what we're seeing with Aerith and the group. But then what does that mean for this right here? Like, if that was a physical manifestation of the live stream, then what the hell is this? Like, what what is Meteor World? What does any of that even mean, man? What we're looking at next is not necessarily translation, but it's Aitakemochi talking about something from the Ultimania that involves the Ancients. Toriyama says the FF7R is the first game to actually show what the Ancients wore in the past, and when they modeled their clothes, they wanted to create a design that had elements that were similar to Aerith's outfit. Now that might seem like a nothing quote at first, but the reason why this interests me is because this simulation that we got to see within Remake in the Shinra building isn't just some like Shinra propaganda, which is what I thought it was. It's just Shinra trying to push Neo Midgar on everybody, right? That's what I took this as. But Toriyama is saying that this is our first actual look at the Ancients and what they wore. Like it's actually the Ancients, not just like Shinra's interpretation of the Ancients. This is actually what they look like, what they wore, possibly how they live, like what maybe their, their villages and shit look like, all that other stuff, man. Like a lot of this could be pretty legit, even that airship that just flew by. And that is huge information, man. That is important. This is something that has always piqued my interest when it comes to Remake. Regardless of our thoughts on Remake, whether you do or don't like it, what I've always wanted from this is stuff that I've never seen before. And this is why the, these two translations go together, the live stream and the Ancients. Because I've always wanted to see the live stream. Like, I, if, if we haven't seen it in the past, which I, it seems like we maybe have a little bit briefly, like, I've wanted a good look at what the physical live stream actually looks like, where Sephiroth fell down, right? Where did he go? And when it comes to the Ancients, man, what did they actually look like? Because in the original game, like, pretty much nobody knows what the Ancients are. Remake seems like the the general public kind of has more of an idea of what the Ancients are. But what did they look like? Because the original game had these, like, fat purple ghost things with beards or whatever within the Temple of the Ancients, which wasn't what they actually looked like. It was just, like, a spirit body for the Ancients. And according to Toriyama, there's more to this simulation than just what Shinra wants people to see. Like, it's actually the Ancients, it seems like. And I suppose it's kind of interesting or cool that they model their clothes somewhat after Eros, but that's kind of, like... Eh, whatever. I said in the past, dude, like, Genova, that's the thing I'm trying to learn more about as well. I don't know that they would go into her actual origins when it comes to Remake, because she's like, I don't know if you could, because how could they even know her origins when she fell down from the sky, right? She came down from space. It's kind of hard to actually know where she came from, like the people on Gaia. But if we could find a way to learn her origin story, dude, I would absolutely love it. And also, just kind of a quick side note, playing back through this final chapter, again, it's been a while since I've done that, and recording just for this video... Like, it has me a little more pumped for part two, man, and beyond. Like, I, seeing all this stuff again, playing through the boss fights again and stuff like that. And not really knowing what the future holds for the remake project in terms of, like, you know, what the hell is actually going on with this ending. Just has me a little bit excited, man. I don't know. 
Anyways, but dudes, that is pretty much the video. So for the people out there that are a lot more lore savvy than I am, because I don't know literally everything about FF7, I have, I think, pretty decent knowledge, but I don't know everything. Have we ever, besides, I guess, maybe that Gen Genesis uh, Minerva scene, have we ever actually seen the live stream, like, physically in a game or anything like that? I don't recall. And I just hope that going forward throughout the rest of the remake games, we learn a lot more about the Ancients. They're such a driving force for the original FF7 story, you know, the search for the Promised Land, Aerith being the last Cetra. But we don't really know or learn much, if anything, about them in the original game. That just kind of sucks. Hope we get more with Remake. That's the video, my dudes. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. We'll see more Final Fantasy VII Remake content. Turn on my notifications. Follow me on Twitter, Dash and David. I'm on Discord. Links to my social networks are in the description and in the outro. Later, guys. Used to care what people thought, but now I care more. I mean, nobody out here's got it figured out. So therefore, I've lost all hope of a happy ending, depending on whether or not it's worth it. So insecure, no one's perfect. We spend it with no shame. We blow that. Like Coltrane, we in here. Like Rogaine, or leave it. Like Cobain.